So today I'm gonna show you an easy way to solve this challenge. It says, it says between two sets. It says there will be two arrays of integers. Determine all integers that satisfy the following two conditions. One, the elements of the first array are all factors of the integer being considered. Two, the integer being considered is a factor of all the elements of the second array. These numbers are referred to as being between the two arrays. Determine how many such numbers exist. Then we have an example, a is equal to 2, 6, b is equal to 24, 36. In this case, we have the, the, we have the two numbers to be 6 and 12. All right, the best way to understand it is using the whiteboard. Now we have two arrays, we have a, is equal to, we have two arrays, A is equal to 2, 6, and B is equal to 24, 36. So we have 2, 6, and we have B is equal to 24, 36, okay? So what we are trying to find is a number where, a number X, where X where x, let's say, let me just use a different thing here. So we are trying to find a number where, where everything here is a factor of x. So we can say where a is a factor of x and b, everything in b is a multiple, a multiple of x. So this is basically how it is. Now the first criteria I want to keep in mind is that the every, for everything here to be a factor of x, it means that that number should be either equal to or greater than the maximum number here. So we are going to be starting from max a. That's the least, that's what this, the, the the number has to be, the number has to be from max A. And take note that B, everything in B must be also greater than or equal to everything in A. Okay, so the first point is max A. The last point, the highest number this number can be should be the least, not the least value in B. Because for this number x, for b to be a multiple of x, for everything in b to be a multiple of x, the, everything here should be greater than or equal to x. It means that x should be equal to the, 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 the upper point, the maximum number should be the minimum number here. So it's going to be mean b. So that's what you want to first keep in mind. The, the next thing you want to consider is we have this range. So it means that for everything in this range, we're going to check first if we are going to iterate this list and check if it if the number if the number is a factor of the the, the number. If it, if that is true, that is fine. Then we also in the second instance we are going to check everything here to check. If this the number is a the number here is a multiple of the current number in question. If these two tests passes, these two iteration passes, then we can now count that that number is accepted. So if I'm going to kind of uh, explain it further here, I can. But it's better I simply just go write the code and I write it. As I'm writing it, I'm explaining it further. So what we are saying here, the first thing we want to do here, we want to say, we, we want to initialize the result because at the end of the day, we are, going to we are going to return how many items we counted. So we have initialized the result to zero. So we are going to iterate for i in range from max a to mean b, right? From max a to mean b and 
because the range function is exclusive of the second parameter, I'm going to say plus one so that it can include the actual uh, mean B value. All right, so at this point we can now, first we can assume that this number is accepted, that is, is a factor of the first array, the first array is a factor and the second array is multiple. So we can say is factor multiple equal to true. But along the iteration, if we find out otherwise, we are going to set it to false. And at the end of the day, if we check this value, if it's ever false, then this item on the iteration will throw it out, will never add it up. So I'm going to start the first iteration. I'm going to say for ln, for ln in the first array. So I'm going to say for ln in A, okay? So I'm going to check if the element is a mod, is a factor of, of what? Of this item on the iteration. So I'm going to say if, if this, uh, if, so it's going to be if I mod LM, we give some space, create readability, ELE is, equal, uh, is, is not equal to zero because we are looking at when this becomes false, it's not equal to zero. If it's ever not equal to zero, there's no need of checking for that. We, we simply stop. So we are going to say is factor multiple is equal to false and we simply break out of this loop using break statement. All right. So this loop here is for the first array A. So we are going to do for the second, for the second array, this time we are going to be looking for if the element of the array is a multiple of the current value on the iteration. So I'm going to start another loop that says for L in B, I'm going to say if, this time, if ELA mod, if ELA mod I, because this is the same value we are still checking. If it's ever not equal to zero, then there's no need of continuing the iteration. We are simply going to stop. So I'm going to say is factor multiple is equal to false and simply break away from this loop. So at the end of this checking this item, we are going to check if is factor, factor multiple is ever false. If it's ever false, then, uh, then there's nothing to do. But if it's true, if it remains true, it means that uh, it means that everything worked well. So it means that this it mean, yeah it means that it is a factor of of the of of it's a, the element of a is a factor of this uh, number and the element of b are, is a multi, are multiples of this number so i'm going to simply say here e is factor multiple is equal to true then i'm going to say results results plus equals one. So we increase the result. At the end of the day, I'm simply going to return the results. Okay, so this is exactly the solution to this problem. I'm going to run it and let's see what we have. I hope you understand it, but let's just make sure to see if everything works fine. So I'm gonna run this code now. So it passes the two test cases. I'm going to now submit to see if it works well. And you can see it passes all the test cases as well. So it did well. And I'd like to thank you for being there. Remember to subscribe to my channel and also like and share this video. Leave me a comment if you have any comments for me. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and we'll see you in the next challenge.